You know, as you head over to Uganda, you need to have confidence that you have a local body of believers here in Global Harvest Fellowship that's praying for you. And, you know, we've made that promise before, and, and I'll make it again. We're going to be praying for you, bro. And you also have full confidence that the Holy Spirit is guiding you. You know, it's, it's not us that's sending you. You were there before us anyway. <laughs> but you have confidence that he's called you there. And that he's going to work in you and through you. And that you can't do it on, you know, of yourself. You guys can't do it in and of yourselves. But it's only because of the grace of God that he enables you to do righteous works for him. And so not only did Paul have confidence in the work of the Holy Spirit in his life, but he also had confidence in being used to honor God. And we see that in verse 20. It says, As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Again, this is interesting because Paul doesn't know what's going to happen to him. He doesn't know if he's going to be able to make it out. But he knows one truth. And this one truth he finds confidence in. That regardless of what God does in his life, he knows God will be glorified. And that God will be honored through him. You know, we get caught up so much in our present circumstances that we forget God has specifically placed you there to honor and glorify Him. Through the hardships in life, through the trials in life this guy was experiencing, he knew God placed him there. Even if he loses his life or he keeps it, he's going to use his body to honor God. And, and I love the fact that Paul points that out, where he says in, that Christ will be honored in my body. He doesn't say that Christ will be honored by my soul, Christ doesn't get honored by my spirit, Christ doesn't get honored by my mind. He doesn't focus on those things. He focuses on his physical body and how God will physically use him to do the work of, of to do his work. You know, he wanted to be physically used by God to glorify him. He wanted to be physically used by God to work and honor him. We have so many churches in America that are just so used to just glorifying God with their minds. And they're okay with that. They just come to church on Sundays, maybe they go to a Bible study or a prayer meeting, and they, they attend. And they glorify God with their minds, yet they leave here and do nothing with it. They don't take action into everything that they've been learning. And they think it's fine because they're filling their minds with the knowledge of God, and they think that's going to be enough. But Paul here wanted to use his body to honor God. And so his spirit is being used and being guided by the Holy Spirit. He's filling his mind with the word of God and he's using his body to fulfill the work of God. Again, I'm so encouraged by you guys and how you decided you know, to, to move out and, and to fulfill your part in the Great Commission. But my question is to the rest of us. How are we using our bodies to fulfill the work of God? How are we using our bodies to honor God? Or are we using our bodies to honor something else? You know, we get so caught up in the physical pleasures of this world, we forget to physically use our bodies to glorify Him. We get so attached in relationships, we get so attached in money, we get so attached to just whatever we can put our bodies into, that we forget we are made to honor God, even with our bodies. And so, we need to be used in that way. So, as Christians, we can have confidence to be used to glorify God. You know, we're going to experience hardships and sufferings, just like Paul is experiencing here. But we, just like Paul, can have confidence in our minds that we could have salvation that we could, use, we could be used by God to glorify Him. And so we've seen Paul's confidence, or, or a Christian's confidence. Now let's look at a Christian's choices. And that's found in verses 21 to 23. And it says, For to me, to live is Christ, 
and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. And so after Paul finishes talking about how he wants to use his body to glorify God, he gets into this discussion about life and death. He starts talking about life, and he, and he starts talking about death, but really, he comes down to the same conclusion. He comes down to the same thought here, and he says that to live is Christ, and to die, really, is more Christ. And so his life, his main ambition, is Christ. The Greek actually says, for to me to live, Christ. To die, gain. It's, it's, it's a small phrase, yet it carries so much impact. He defines living in verse 22 where it's, where, I mean, verse 20, yeah, in verse 22 it says, If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And so his definition of living is fruitful labor. His definition of living is serving Christ. He understands that. In contrast, he says, but even in death, he says, to die is gain. And in verse 23 he says, I am hard pressed between the two, my desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. So even his understanding of death is to be with Christ. And so here, Paul undeniably loved the Lord Jesus Christ, and he didn't want to waste his life on dumb things. He didn't want to waste his life doing and pursuing the things that had no value. You know, for the most part, I wasted my weekend playing video games with my son. <laughs> now, it's not necessarily bad, but I'll be honest, you know, I wasted a lot of hours just trying to beat up Dr. Octopus. <laughs> I mean, Marvel Lego superheroes, it's a pretty good game. But, if I made that my life ambition, if I made that the, my goal to be able to finish <coughs> Just that game, at the, end of, at the end when I die, I have accomplished nothing. You know, Jeff um, Purcell uses verse 21, and he says that if you put anything else where Christ is in that verse, you can replace the word gain with the word loss. For example, for me to live is money. Then when you die, it's gone, it's lost. For me to live is fame, popularity. When you die, it's loss. For me to live is power. For me to live is sex. For me to, to literally put anything in there aside from Christ, it's going to be loss. It's going to be worth nothing. Queen Elizabeth said on her dying bed, she, this, this woman had everything. She had money, she had popularity, she had fame. They said, right before she died, she just says, it's over. She had all that stuff that she realized, it's worth nothing. It's gone. Everything's fleeting. Let's not waste our lives on dumb things. We often pursue these things, but don't realize it's just a waste of time. There were stories of a, a, a missionary organization that what they would do, I've shared this before, they would pack their things in a pine casket. And they would pack all their things and they would ship it out to wherever they're going. And what they would do before they left is they would write a letter to their parents and it would only be open in the event of their death. And the symbolization of why they put all their things in a casket, why they put their things in a pine box, is to symbolize that where they're going, they don't plan to come back. 
Their pursuit, their pursuit is to glorify God through their mission. 